Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1393. Step into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about Chairman Powell signaling a change in policy. So as we all know, the Federal Reserve is meeting at Jackson Hole, Wyoming right now. And Chairman Powell stepped up to the mic to say the time has come for the policy to adjust. He said the direction of travel is clear and the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the involving outlook, and the balance of risks. Of course, right now, traders are pricing in a 100% chance of a quarter percent rate cut in September, according to the CME Group's FedWatch tool. But there's not really consensus over how big the cut will be. Some people say a quarter percent. Some people say a half a percent. But those who say a half a percent are definitely in the minority camp. Naeem Aslam, chief investment officer at Zay Capital Markets, said Powell's comments have brought a lot of excitement for traders. Even though many expected the Fed to say that time has come to make adjustments, it shows how deprived the market has been due to high interest rates. The S&P has been up 1% for the week and is positive for the second week in a row. The largest gainers this week were not technology companies, but instead retailers like Target and TJ Maxx. Target was up 10% and TJX companies was on pace for a 7% weekly increase. We also saw 10 out of the 11 S&P 500 sectors have a positive week. Of course, bank stocks were reacting positively, and the S&P 500 has 1,500 regional banks, comprising all the regional bank stocks in the S&P 500, the mid-cap 400, and the small-cap 600 indexes, and it surged 5.5% in early trading, bringing the gain since the start of the third quarter to 16.6%. Of course, banks being very sensitive to interest rates. And as rates go down, Demand for mortgages and refis, et cetera, goes up, which is all positive for bank profitability. We also learned that new home sales picked up in July, hitting an adjusted annualized rate of 739,000, which is the highest new home sales number since May of 2023. It was much higher than the 620,000 expected by economists. Another member of the Federal Reserve, Atlanta Fed President, Rafael Bostic said that the interest rate cut is in play for September, but did not make a firm commitment. He noted that inflation is improving, but it still is not particularly close to their target. He said, we still have a ways to go, and I don't think it is in our interest or in anyone's interest to just assume that we're done, and so we don't have to worry about it. He has said previously that he doesn't expect the Fed to cut until the fourth quarter and only once this year, counter to market expectations. One thing to note is that the market is pricing in sharply lower interest rates next year. What the market is saying is that the Fed fund rate at the end of 2025 will be 3%. It's currently 5.3%. You don't get that kind of a decrease unless there's a recession. But a recession occurs when there's two consecutive quarters of decline in the real gross domestic product. And right now, that doesn't really look realistic. So interest rates have declined a lot faster than perhaps they should. And so we'll have to watch for volatility in some of those interest rates. But if rates dropped to 3% in 2025, that would create a massive housing boom. It's just not likely because the market isn't officially in a recession now, even though three out of five Americans think it is. Things are actually looking stronger than what most people think. And while there is one segment of the economy that is more delinquent on credit cards, the high end of the market seems to be doing very well. So we'll continue to monitor the situation and report back to you. 
If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And while you're there, sign up for my weekly newsletter for more wealth tips for your financial freedom. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.